Hello and welcome. You're tuned to The Leg Up, your weekly domestic thoroughbred pre- preview podcast and Taranaki Cup Day uh, at Pukekura Raceway and obviously White Road Lodge uh, day down there at Winger 2 to have a look at this week. But um, yeah, I'm joined by Stephen Hunt and man barely standing, Paul Mawadi. Fair bit to dissect from last week, gentlemen, uh, Wellington Cup Day. All sorts of things happening. What happened, Steve? The track? <laughs> Melody I'm Bell? The track, yeah, Melody Bell equals Sunlines 13. Group 1 victories. And she heads towards the Herbie Dyke, looking to break that overall record of 14 Group 1s. And look, it was, it was one of those days where, just as a, a form analyst dissecting the race, I thought, or the overall day, I thought uh, the track played indifferent at times. Not just last Saturday, but on day two of the carnival. And I think that rail, even three metres from... Uh, out from the rail uh, definitely played in the IG inferior ground which is going to make it very tricky to do the form post Trentham on what we saw on Saturday but overall just going back to the eventual winners uh, Melody Bell winning mm. uh, the Thorndon Mile set weights and penalties and can't wait to see her over 2,000 metres at Tarapa and what do you do with Cinerama? She misses the start mm. again okay this was a, a decent go by 10 lengths and she still managed to run a placing and ran second uh, did Cinerama but look uh, I can't wait to see Cinerama get the 2,000 metres which I think that's the, that's the aim next start in terms of the uh, Herbie Dyke at Tarapa but y- y- you can't see her beating Melody Bell if she's going to continue those traits which we've seen this campaign mm-hmm. and missing the start so mm-hmm. uh, a question mark around her but fantastic day Waisaki winning the Wellington Cup Alan Sharrock I don't think there's any trainer in the country that would be better than Alan Sharrock there's probably a few that sit on par with him but in terms of better, I don't think there's too many uh, than Alan Sharrick in identifying a race, maybe three, six months out, working back targeting, yeah, working, working back, back from that race, targeting that horse, and setting it up perfectly in terms of it, in terms of its grand final. And we saw that with Waisaki, mm-hmm. which this race was planned months in advance. Uh, Twenty six dollars on offer in futures markets <laughs> two or three months ago. It was a lot of nice mm-hmm. tickets around Waisaki, and he did the job. And Sam Collett becoming the Cup's queen. In the last 18 months, she's won a couple of Walkland Cups uh, with Glory Days and also Roger that and now taking a Wellington Cup aboard Wasaki. Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, Wasaki, they didn't forget to back it, Paul, Wasaki, uh, on the day either. They certainly didn't. <laughs> um, and why not? And, and to those who did get the uh, $26 on offer yeah. uh, a few months ago, well done to them. Yeah. Um, not too many backed uh, Bluey's chance, though. <laughs> <laughs> I almost thought at the 200, uh, he almost might have snuck away and had it. Was he 200 to 1 uh, fixed odds up the close? Or very close to it, 150, yeah. I'm sure he was. Um, Kenny Moore there and blew his chance. He's going to back up on a Taranaki Cup. So uh, maybe you've got him in the numbers, man, barely standing. Where do you put Melody Bell? Champion status, uh, 13 group ones, four. All, all hail the queen. Yeah, you've got it, really. She was just superb. and um, Yeah, just hope that she goes on and... Maybe picks up another one or two. <laughs> That's the plan. It'd be, yeah, yeah, it was great. So, yeah, we saw the Queen, and then we saw a, a court clown as well. <laughs> so if we quietly spring and Brendan Popwell, morning pops. Uh, yeah, some turkey. I think, the, I think the court case is pending or upcoming mm. or very, very not too far away. What an absolute idiot he was. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, it, it was a bit of a dampener, wasn't it, on uh, what was a great day of racing, as you, as you boys have mentioned, uh, with what we saw with Wasaki and also... Uh, with how uh, Melody Bell was able to gain that 13th Group 1 victory. But uh, you left a bit of a sour, t- a sour taste in many people's mouths, and understandably because uh, that could have been horrific. The best result actually came out of what, what happened with uh, the bloke not getting bowled uh, and nobody was hurt in terms of horses or jockeys. But uh, there is a number of different scenarios that could have happened uh, and none of them are any nice, are they? So uh, an idiot, uh, and uh, really he is a bloke that... Uh, in my mind, rhymes with banker. <laughs> yeah, well said. Uh, talk about Melody Bell, mate. Uh, third in Group Ones. Um, where do we put her in the uh, in the uh, echelons of uh, time of horse racing? She's got to be used. To, the champion's got to be used here, doesn't it? Oh, for sure, for sure. And, and look, she's won Group Ones on, on both sides of the Tasman. Uh, and, and I think Jamie. Uh, actually nailed it when, when speaking about uh, the effort of, of getting to that 13th group one and equaling and having to equal with Sunline because Sunline is a horse who did it a- across the world and was, a, was a, as we know, the, the, the famous line, the mayor of the world where uh, Mel- Melody Bell has won uh, tw- 12 group ones in her 
in her own country uh, and, and just the one across the Tasman. So I think that's, um, you, you've got to put that into correlation. She is, without a doubt, a champion because she is a horse that is undeniable at 1,400 metres through to 2,000 metres with where she's won her group one. So you can't take that away from her. But I, I just, yeah, I understand where Jamie's coming from with that comment as well because it's a hard one to compare. They are both terrific in their own right uh, and Melody Bell is surging towards going past Sunline, you'd imagine, over the next few weeks. You, you tend to put these rose-tinted glasses on, man, barely standing, don't you, around these champions? I mean, I keep thinking of Sunline, Might and Power, but it's because that's when I was growing up. That's how I grew up. So they're always going to be my champions. You know, you think the old Pete McPadden there, we use about manicato every five minutes. You and know, there's like, is that yeah, how it works? There, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that should take away from the no. achievements of Melody Bell yeah. and the Tiago team. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all very good. As you say, you're growing up and you remember all the good yeah, times yeah, yeah. Um, and all the dollar each way bets you won as a, uh, <laughs> as a youngster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah. 13 group runs in any language is a, is a sensation. That's a huge effort. Yeah, no, agreed. Pops, um, Mater of the Week time, mate. What have you got for us um, this week? They've been uh, popular as always. Have you found one for us uh, around the traps? Yeah, let's go back to Hawke's Bay last Thursday. I think this was a good meeting to be able to try and maybe pull apart a few maiden races, but the one race uh, that produced the best figures throughout the day is this horse in the black cap by the name of Tar and Cement. Looked very good through his trials. This is a son of reliable man that is trained by Tony Pike, and we saw this horse coming off speed. That's what I like about this particular win by this runner, is that the runner has come uh, well off tempo, uh, where we saw uh, look, a, few, a fair few of the races won by those that, are, that were close enough to the rail or close enough to the speed at Hawke's Bay and really like how this horse is let down. Produced the best uh, last 600, last 400, second or third best last 200, run through the line. That's a good win. That's a really good maiden win by uh, Tar and Cement. Uh, so, yeah, I was pretty happy to quite quickly mark that down as the horse has the maiden of the week with how that horse won last week. Is, is he nominated for a derby? He's a three-year-old, I presume. Pops, three-year-old, reliable man. Is he in a derby market? or? Steve? No. No, he's not. He's not. No. Okay. Um, I think it's come a little bit too soon, the derby. Okay. Uh, having his win there, his maiden company over seven furlongs, and we're talking the derby, what, three or four weeks away. Mm. He, he looks to me as a horse that possibly could head to Queensland. A Queensland mm. derby, we know Tony Pike likes taking a team over in Queensland in what is the, the back end of our autumn. Um, just looking at the pedigree out of a Stravinsky mare, the dam ha happens to be a half to Game On, who was a real Cups horse in Brisbane, mm -hmm. uh, funny enough, uh, placing in the Chairman's and Premier's Cup. So there is a bit of pedigree on the dam side. You chuck in the siren, reliable man, and it's going to be a horse that's going to go over a staying trip. So I'd say uh, that the Tony Pike team will be leaning towards Brisbane at this stage with that horse. Yeah, OK, Tar and Cement, one to follow there for BP. Um, boys, let's get into the form for the week. Taranaki Cup Day there. Steve, and we want to start with the two-year-olds here in the Woburn Farm Classic. It's Group 3, I think, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And look, it's uh, it's one horse that punters have really identified into the favourite. And number one in Quattro Quinta in early doors of trading. Open $2.20, now trading at two ten for Tiakau slash Jamie Richards and Opie Bosson. Good to see him back riding again this Saturday, trying to get his weight down. In front of Wolfgang in that second line, 270 just out of turn to 280 with the warm support around the favourite. A Hillaby blinkers on. A no rider allocated as yet, 750 out of turn to $8. Magneto drawn the ace, $9. I'm a rocker B. Uh, well supported early doors. First starter here for Karen McQuaid at $11. And best of the rest is Madame Sass at $31. But quite telling the early trading round number one, Quattro Quinta, one of the better back runners in our four races that we currently have opened in the stakes race for the juveniles. Yeah, OK, BP, Quattro Quinta did the job. I uh, thought Wolfgang might have had it shot to bits. Mm -hmm. uh, at about the 200 metre mark, uh, is there a chance he can turn the tables or we go safe, we play safe and take the tangerine? Well, I suppose the barrier draws play a part in that, doesn't it, where this horse has drawn a couple of spots better uh, than Wolfgang with uh, Quattro Quinta drawn in barrier number five and Wolfgang in seven. I think you're right though, Thad, because in that Wellesley race, it was a point where it looked like Wolfgang was going to go straight on by. I, I like how he's he's got better with every run, the son of Pacini and uh, trained by, by Peter Mackay. I think he is the distinct danger with how he's run in that race and how he's, as I said, just getting better with every run. It's pretty hard to go past the Wellesley form, really, isn't it, around those horses that have finished uh, first, second and third and even 
uh, who was else in there? Oh, Martini Diva was in that race also, who finished back in the field. So that's where the eyes gravitate towards. But also, at the same time, it's pretty hard to go past Quattro Quinta with that uh, you know, Opie Boss and Jamie Richards factor, a two-year-old that's up and running and has been stakes placed already this season. And then that stakes victory last time out in the Wellesley Stakes. All the form is there. Uh, I, I find him pretty hard to go past, oh, to be honest with you. And two twenty into two dollars and ten cents, you can understand the support. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Billy Stanley, a bit of a gap in this market. Uh, two ten, two eighty, out to uh, eight dollars, nine dollars. Um, can you see Wolfgang um, causing an? Well, I say an upset. It wouldn't probably be much of an upset, but can he turn the tables? I guess. Yeah, I, I think he's a a big chance. As yeah. you say, uh, in the Wellesley down the straight when he. Uh, headed Quattro. Uh, sure he did. I'm sure he did. Uh, I thought, uh, just like you guys, was going to go past. and But he uh, he was three, four wide the whole way. had a tough, tough run. And I thought that effort down the straight was huge. And um, I do give him a chance. So mm. if this betting trend, uh, this pattern continues, yep. um, we're probably going to see uh, the Tiako runner finish around even money. Mm. Uh, so you may get a wee bit more on Wolfgang. I, don't, I really do like the chances of Wolfgang. Yeah, okay, so you think in north of threes we might step in. Is it, one, is it a race where you could back them both somehow and get away with a profit, Steve? Or oh, I think you could, yeah, absolutely. Depending what price you want to take on Quattro Quinto. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if he started in the red come Saturday afternoon. Mm. Just has that betting profile Opie Boss and Jamie Richards upside in terms of having four starts, won a couple of them and been a bridesmaid in the in the middle range there, second and third up. So Quantro Quinta. Mm. Interesting to do the map here, because Quantro Quinta, I think Opie will look to find the rail from barrier five. He'll come across, find that rail. The intriguing runner is this I'm a Rocker B, mm. who's trialled up very, very well. Uh, look, hasn't done it on times at the trials, but in terms of a map, it looks to be a pace influence, uh, maybe even a potential leader in this race. So Opie might just take a sit, and see what I'm a Rocker B does. Uh, Alicia McCall's on this individual. Mm. And as I mentioned, it went out by about seven, eight lengths in its most recent trial. was quite dominant in winning. Uh, but again, I should stress, didn't run time in that trial. But has shown a plenty of gate speed. So that might be the leader here. Quantro Quinta will come across, get that rail. Uh, Wolfgang got that sticky gate barrier seven yeah, as it did down the chute. The side, yeah, there's no shoot at Taranaki. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see where it finds itself in the map. Uh, Magneto looks to get a nice run uh, if it can get that get that trail in behind Quattro Quinta. Mm. Uh, but look, it's an intriguing race. Uh, Quattro Quinta, the stable have alluded that this may not have huge upside development into its three-year-old campaign, and so they're they're, they're willing to to make this prep every post a winner mm, okay. uh, in, in terms of Quattro Quinta. And the question back to you, BP: twelve hundred meters around Quattro Quinta, mm. is it a concern for you? Uh, that's probably the, the one red flag that I have uh, for, for the horse, uh, considering that, you know, over a thousand metres, Wolfgang's had a pretty serious look at the runner and, and has only gripped on to win by a nose, so there's an extra 200 metres uh, to be added on to that, but um, I, I'm happy enough. I think, I think you've got to back in, I think you've got to back in Jamie Richards here and, and, and Opie Boston and be able to try and find that spot without having to do too much work outside leader. I think you're right, I think that the horse that can provide that little bit of interest to this race is... Uh, the McQuaid trained runner and I'm a rocker bee because of how, of how good she was in the trial uh, and, and Eilish McCall is a, is a jockey that, that's riding with a bit of confidence. I know this is a group three race but this is a jockey that is a very good gate rider uh, in, in terms of getting them out and putting them up on speed and this horse looks to have that barrier speed also so you combine all that up uh, how keen is Opie going to be able to try and find that spot either outside leader or pressing on and putting the horse right into the race. I think that, that's the intriguing part of it and that's where I suppose he could become undone over the 1,200 metres, if he has to do too much work to be able to find that spot. She got a bit of a rap yesterday, Eilish McCall, didn't she, um, BP? You were working yesterday afternoon. She was riding yesterday at Tadapa, wasn't she? Yeah, Pam, Pam Gerard. Uh, look, she, yeah. she uh, has done a lot of hard work, and, and behind the scenes uh, has Eilish McCall, and, and now is starting to, to pave the way because uh, she's uh, getting that success uh, out on the track. She's, a, she's a, as I said, a very good ho uh, horse rider in terms of getting them up on speed and getting them out of the barriers, and... Uh, that, that's how it's paved the way so far, and uh, she's put in the hard work and behind the scenes. So, yeah, good on her. Yeah, 100%. Uh, gee, I would love to see some money for Hillaby, Steve, and it's, and it's not happening. Well, yeah, why, I, see why it's, not? I see it's nominated uh, for Taranico on Monday. Uh, um, okay. And Lisa Allpress doesn't have a ride in that race, so if it does take its spot, Hillaby, uh, you'd believe Lisa will take, take the mount there. But again, it's still accepted. Just see where it pans out in terms of a race, will it be on Saturday at the Naki or over the hill here at Taranuko? But mm, um, intriguing okay. runner, Hillaby. 
Uh, it does have a little bit of a wrap, has some, has some short SPs, and I like Creator Date. And just back to Quantro Quinta, I've, mm. I've got no dramas, 1200 metres. Yep. I thought it was quite strong at the line and through the line over 1000 metres. Uh, a lot of the margins it was, it was looking to hold. Uh, through the line, so I've got no dramas 1200 metres. You only have to go back to the second dam on Contro Quinta. Mm. It was Eva Swindell. Oh, yes, yes. By yes. line, and she yeah. was managed She managed to win New Zealand Cup. I think she was placed in the City Vulcan Cup. So the pedigree on the dam side, you don't have to go too far back to get a little bit of staying quality around Contro Quinta. But in terms of an individual, I think Jamie Richards just, just feels there's not that huge development. Uh, in terms of a three-year-old campaign, but 1,200 no drums for me. Okay. Well, I'm a rocker bee, man barely standing at a Shelley bee. Remember back in here in the day? That's, Kel that's Karen McQuaid, she trained that as well. I don't think it won a race. I think it placed, oh, I think it was one of these horses that was placed eight or nine times. Oh, I might be, be right. wrong. That'll be right. Uh, but it showed enough speed as a, as a horse um, and ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I could be wrong, but it was one of those bridesmaids horses, but mm. just showed enough ability. And well, I don't know what, in terms of a, a progeny, what it's left to date, but uh, mm. this one definitely has a little bit of toe. Okay. I'm a rocker bee. Yeah, right. Uh, top four pops in the uh, in the Woburn farm. I just find it hard to go past the Wellers, the yeah. sort of form lines that we've got heading into the race, uh, and then you've added into that mix of of I'm a rocker bee, who is uh, the, the newcomer and brings trial form. So. I'll go with Quattro Quinta to beat Wolfgang, and mm -hmm. look, Magneto's going to get the, the right run from a barrow draw of one, uh, and then I'm a rocker, but he's a horse who, who's going to go forward and be put into the race. So, mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, and six, but uh, I've marked the one on top, and I, yeah, I think it will get into the red. I just think it has that profile where yeah. the horse will be very well backed. I don't disagree with so that. So, BP, what, what, what are you, you happy? obviously you're happy at 210. Where do you stop? Where do you stop in terms of a betting proposition around Quattro Quinta? Well, uh, I suppose it has the chance of getting in that 180 zone, doesn't it? Um, you, you, you know, like it's a horse who could get, I think he can get into that bracket. Because you, you also have to think about the Australians that could be betting into this race. This is a, a, a race that'll, you know, sit into their afternoon where they're just about to nestle into their, into their races. And they see a Jamie Richards trained two-year-old with Opie Boston aboard. Well, uh, I've done enough following of our races <laughs> to be able to say that that's probably a bet um, without even having to look at the form. Uh, so you, you'll get those type of punters um, that, that will be keen to roll into it. So, yeah, I, I suppose around that 175, 180 mark might stop me where instead of having a single bet, you might have to run it into something else to make it profitable. Yeah, OK. Now your colours to the wall, man, barely standing. Wolfgang or Quattro Quinta? Yeah, I'll try and balance the book. I'll, I'll put Wolfgang <laughs> on top. And uh, once again, back against Jamie Richards and Opie Bosson. Talk about not looking the form and having a bet. That's your mantra, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. To be fair, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. Good good team man going for Wolfgang. We might need it, I'd say, by the uh, time race five comes around at New Plymouth. Guys, race number seven on the card is the uh, Phillies prelude, or the Oaks prelude, I should say, Steve. And... This brings together a very, very even lineup, and uh, but it probably a deserving favourite off its last start run. Yeah, Group Two placed in the Royal Stakes, Lily's Lady. It's drawn a sticky gate in Barrier 14, but holds that top line. 420 out to 440. In fact, there's no strong lead here. Four or five even spread of money, including Providence provides at five dollars. Then you've got the dual stable mates here in Alan Sharrick, uh, Signora Nera and Sumi, 550 each of two. Yolo at nine dollars. Carolina Reaper 950. Then there's the second division here, Spine Tingle at 17s was Surprise Me. Is Dara at $21, uh, Lana Court at 23 best of the rest, Love It or Leave It at 31 So no clear lead, speaking around Lily's Lady, Providence Provides, Signora Nera, Sue Me and a little bit of speaking for Carolina Reaper. Gee, uh, well, this is a bit more of a betting race, BP, and there's a few ways you could uh, do your dough here uh, in the uh, Fast Track Insurance Oaks Prelude. Yeah, this is a good race, isn't it? Like, I, I really race. like um, the, the, the look of this race because you've got a few horses here that are, that are testing the water, uh, getting out to 1,800 metres and looking to maybe push on towards a, a New Zealand Oaks. Uh, I, I like Lily's Lady. I think this is a very nice filly. I, I've, I've backed her at an enormous price in the, in the New Zealand Oaks. So I just wanted to see her progressing and get there. So then I can have a, a roll of the <laughs> dice and say that I've got a ticket in the lottery at the big price with Lily's Lady. Uh, she was, I, I thought she was a top run when running second in the Royal Stakes uh, was uh, Lily's Lady. But the gate's yeah. very awkward uh, a, a, around Taranaki for this runner. So that, that is the red flag. I actually like the both Shark runners. I think both of these horses were scratched from the Desert Gold. They had uh, barrier draws that didn't suit them on the weekend just gone. I think both Sumi and Signora Nera have 
probably a, a bit going for them. I think Sumi forget last time to the races, saddle slipped, good draw, Danielle Johnson aboard. I really like some of her mm. runs leading up this preparation and indicating that 1,800 metres will be spot on. And Signora Nera, the way that the horse got home uh, in a eulogy stakes when finishing in a third spot uh, and beaten him behind Bonham, then went on to win a Group 1. I think both of those horses uh, uh, locally trained ha have a chance in, the, in an open race. Yeah, 100%. You could do worse than back a Alan Sherrick runner. That Taranaki man barely standing, it's suggest. We only just mentioned him uh, only a few <laughs> minutes ago, and, and here he is again. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. Oh, I really like the look of that Senora Nera. Yep. Oh, I, I thought the third in the eulogy was super impressive. Uh, got held up at a crucial uh, crucial stage and then really let down uh, in the straight uh, flying home. So, yeah, I, I like the money too, 550, I think. As you say, it's a mm. fairly yeah. wide open affair. Um, that Providence provides uh, that fifth over 1,400 metres uh, in behind Force of Will, who of course went on and uh, picked up the Desert Gold on the weekend. Uh, and the second place, Messier, uh, went on to uh, win after that as well. So yeah, well, some yeah. frank form uh, there for Providence yeah. provides. Very good. Yeah. Speaking of frank form, Carolina Reaper's got a little bit as well, BP. Yeah, look, I really like Carolina Reaper's uh, run last time to the races. And, and if you line up, of course, what we saw yesterday and mm. what looked to be a, a pretty good race to be able to, to probably leverage off because of uh, Shokalila with how that runner has been able to perform in, in the worst part of the track in that Carolina Reaper race and then come out and sit outside leader and finish into second spot and stop all the clocks was also in that race and uh, finished fifth or sixth uh, behind Carolina Reaper and then come out and run second. Uh, yesterday. Uh, there's mm. something about that daughter of, uh, of Vespa. I, I really like mm. how she's won and how she's even put in a couple of efforts before that. So again, it's a, it's another line in the sand for horses going up another couple of hundred metres but also just be able to find out just where these fillies are because th this is this is what these races are about. They're about fact finding missions aren't they? Of, of, to find out if these horses can keep going uh, in the trajectory of maybe to a, a group one uh, New Zealand Oaks and this is what a lot of these connections will find out today uh, on Saturday just where their filly sits. Yeah tough market to frame Steve, uh, it'd be fair to say. Yeah, it always is tricky this race yeah. uh, year in year out. Um, what I will say is this Providence, Providence provides just maps to get a beautiful run yeah. sitting the first three or four and running if you dissect her numbers in terms of her maiden victory at Hastings there was five races over 1400 metres that day she was by far the quickest as an overall time and in terms of standard, uh, it was above standard, her maiden 1,400-metre victory at Hastings. So there's a bit to play out. And that race, or well, that day, did include a 74 and a 65 event as well. So mm -hmm. she did well in maiden class to run an overall quicker time than the older horses and the more experienced horses at 74 and 65 grade. Uh, look, the stable have a very good record in this race in recent years. You only have to go back to last year. Uh, Rock in the Park won this race for Tony Pike. And then a couple of years back, they won this race with Treasure. Now, that was no, a bit yeah, of a betting yeah, plunge yeah, that yeah, day yeah. on Treasure. I'm not saying we're going to get the similar betting, pa uh, betting patterns around Providence Provides, but again, they know how to identify a filly, come down to the central districts and take out this event. And the fact that a lot of the favourites around her have drawn sticky gates, and I know a lot of the connections and stables, when they're looking for a staying filly, they can often ride them fairly neutral to negative mm, to see if they mm, can get that staying journey. Yep. And with those sticky gates, I don't know if too many jockeys will want to be that positive over the 1,800 metres. They might be mm. neutral, as I mentioned, get back from those wide gates where Providence provides just maps beautifully in that mm. top four, top five and running. In fact, could even be in the top two, depending how it plays out in the first couple of furlongs. But mm. I thought she was the horse to be in a race, but very competitive race, and we're going to get a lot of answers coming out of this race because there's a fair few questions heading towards the Oaks. Yeah. And, and talk, just let's just talk about the Oaks for a, for a second. Um, you know, where do these horses sort of sit in this market? BP's probably got a better idea than anyone, <laughs> but, but how's that Oaks market shaping up? Well, the top five or six are not in this race, yep. which can, can, of, can often happen. You've yep. got uh, races just seven days away. Mm. Uh, the David and Karen Alice Phillies Classic, which used to be known as the Sir Tristram. I think a lot of the gun fillies will head there. Mm. Uh, you might see them in the Sunline Vars in a few weeks' time over the Auckland Cup Carnival. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I think this is the second grade of fillies. But saying that, one or two could just pop out and becoming that top two or three in the market. But mm. uh, you're looking at the market here, Lily's Lady sits in that number seventh bracket in terms of favouritism order okay. for the Oaks at $14. Uh, next to the rest, uh, you're looking at possibly 
Uh, who have we got here? We've got Caroline Reaper at $41, yeah, so okay. she could rep represent a bit of value yeah. and out run out her odds if she manages to win this. Uh, you could might you could have some nice tickets yeah. towards an Oaks. Okay, who who are those top two or three or in that Oaks market? Just to refresh my memory. Armelina at four dollars. Yep. All accounts, she's still heading towards the Oaks. Yeah, okay. Uh, cheaper than Divorce, which I absolutely love as a stay in quality filly yeah. at eight dollars. Needle and Thread, who won the Royal Stakes at eight dollars. Mm. A Slave to Love was very impressive yeah, last yeah, Sunday. Yeah, good. Yep. Very impressive at a ten dollar price, and then Tokadangi, who's been there and done that, and all the elite company this time in at ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And fee interesting runner, whether she aims for the Oaks or the Derby, maybe potentially both at a fourteen dollar price. Yeah, okay. Um, top four BP in the uh, Fast Track Insurance Oaks Prelude for us, mate. Yeah, look, just while we're talking about the Oaks, it, it, it's mm. interesting this year, isn't it, because of how, how many fillies will contest the Derby? Is this a year that a filly can say, well? You know, is the Derby race with how things are shaping at the moment towards the Derby that, you know, we've lost the two mm -hmm. at the top end of the market and Aegon and Brando, Rocket Spades now the new favourite for the Vodafone New Zealand Derby. Is there an opportunity for a filly to be, to be able to find themselves in the Derby this year? I know, I know we have fillies in it each and every year, but will we have more? Uh, because, it, you know, trainers may feel as if it's an opportunity to to be able to peel off the derby this year against the boys. So um, I think that'll be the intriguing part of it. And maybe what we see next week uh, too at Tarapa with the uh, David and Karen Ellis Classic uh, with uh, where, where horses head there and, and, and sort of progress uh, needle and thread and those type of horses uh, towards the New Zealand Oaks. So I think there's a, mm. there's a bit to unfold over the next probably four weeks towards either the derby and then maybe onto the Oaks for some of these runners. Because um, BP, the, the boys yep. are definitely don't have the depth as the fillies. Mm. Like Rocket no. Spade, no. And it could be as good as a Madalena over staying trip, but in terms of depth, I just don't think it's there with the boys v the fillies. Mm. And as BP mentioned, it'll be intriguing to see which fillies can test the Waikato Guineas and try and get a line as a possible tilt heading towards a derby. Uh, because that, as, a, as a whole, the fillies, this is the strongest I've seen in recent times. Mm, OK, yeah, good call. Top four BP for us uh, in the uh, Oaks Prelude. Yeah, look, I've changed my mind a number of times around this race because I just, I just, it is a difficult race to try and assess. So, um, I've gone with Sumi on top, just in front of Providence Provides. I think Providence Provides is that horse that can get the right run in the race uh, and be very close to tempo and, and be maybe very hard to peg back. I do like the one in Lily's Lady. I just want to see this horse keep heading in that right direction to say that things are on target for the New Zealand Oaks. If she's hitting the line, uh, that box will be ticked. And I think Signora Nera runner number two. So I'll go nine, five, one, and two. You got Sumi on top. There's no sort of sentiment in that selection, BP, at any chance? No, look, I just think she's just, um, I think she's heading in the right direction. I think she's a horse who needs 1,800 metres now and a little bit further. Uh, right draw. I've been able to get Danielle Johnson aboard. So, yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. No, p p no sentiment. Uh, I know where you're coming <laughs> okay. from there, Thad. But, um, I, and just quickly, too, it was, uh, I hate to. To correct people, it's, it's not cool, but um, uh, Seven Seas was the winner of this race last year. You're right, Stephen, last Rock in a Park. Rock in a Park did win, but it was a maiden race on the same day. Oh, sure, okay, fair mm, enough. Thank okay. you. Everyone hates correcting. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top four, man, barely standing, or give us a few for the uh, for the Oaks Prelude. Uh, Signora Nera. Yep, he's got in his numbers. Providence yeah. Provides. Yep. Uh, Lily's Lady. Yeah, okay. Carolina Reaper. Well, you're not the Reaper for fourth. Not really giving the outsiders much of a show in the uh, Oaks Prelude. It's all right. Don't mind that. Looks a competitive race nonetheless. Right, race number eight, gents. Uh, Stephen, give us a look through the uh, Powerworks Taranaki Cup. Uh, this is an interesting betting market as well. Yeah, dominant favourite in Concert Hall, the Mayor. Just coming off a Group 1 win in the Zabiel Classic on Boxing Day. $1.75, clearly in the red for Danielle Johnson, James Wellwood combo. In front of Platinum Invader, $8.50. She has that second tag with Physical Fantasy. Uh, Vernon Me double figures, 12 with Sheriff. Camino Rocoso, 16. Go Nicholas, 18. Shadows Cast on the quick back up at 23. And Pole Zef, the top bait at 31, is best of the rest. But overall, a race that just stifled in betting at a tad, but best bat runner is fractionally number two in Concert Hall at $1.75. Pretty short on pops, but um, the conditions of the race would probably suggest it needs to be concert hall. Well, yeah, I mean, she's 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 pretty much thrown in here, isn't she? Under the under the set weights and penalties is is concert hall. Uh, she has uh, she is a horse who can operate from 16, 1,600 metres to, to two thousand metres. It sits at eighteen hundred metres. She comes off the back of a Group One Zabiel Classic. They've got some big missions in mind for her. 
Well, it's going to be pretty hard to beat here, isn't it, uh, on the weekend concert hall? Uh, look, maybe that little gap in between runs uh, is, is, is maybe where these other horses have got some runs on the board recently. Uh, you can maybe find that little chink in your armour, but, boy, that's the only thing I can come up with. I, I think she is beautifully placed here, and at the $1.75, there's going to be some interested customers at that price, surely, and maybe looking to try and multi her through whatever you like throughout the weekend. So um, she really does pick herself, doesn't she? He looks like a multi-anchor man barely standing. Uh, are you saying we throw Quattro in there as well? <laughs> You're a wolf gang yes. man, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. $1.75, uh, uh, taking or leaving? Oh, I've definitely thrown it into a few multis, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, just at the weight, she just gets in so nicely there. Mm. Uh, as BP said, coming off a Group 1 win, um, very, very hard to see. Um, anyone sort of pushing her here, got a nice draw from the five. It's all it's all there in front of her. Yeah, it's all shaping up that way, isn't it, Steve? Concert Hall, to be fair. Yeah, it does. Uh, there's set weights and penalties. Um, she's probably the best back country, I uh, best back horse in the country. Like, I haven't dissected the form down south, but it'll be pretty mm. hard to beat that in terms of weights and measures around Concert Hall. Uh, we've set weights and penalties. Look, the benchmark for Colts and Geldings is 55 kegs. Mm. And for Mears, it's 53. So plus three kilograms Concert Hall receives, being a Group 1 winner, gets her up to 56 kegs. Yep. Uh, for, for a horse like Pole Zeth, because a lot of people will be looking at this on the eye and go, rating 80 Pole Zeth, the last rated galloper in the field, yep. happens to be top weight at set weights and penalties. But being a boy, he has the benchmark of 55 kilograms. Mm. He gets a 2kg penalty for being a Group 2 winner, which he won the Avondale Cup last year to get to 57 kegs. Paul Zeff, look, I look back, I, I'm amazed he was a 77 rated galloper when winning the Avondale Cup, was only given six rating points to go to 83. So I found that very unusual. Uh, normally when you're a low rated galloper in between that 70, 80 bracket and you win a group race, you can get as much to 15, 20 rating points, but he was only received six rating points there to get a top rating of 83. And post that victory, he's dropped down to 80 ratings. But yeah, he, he looks terribly placed, Paul Zeff even mm. though he's a class galloper over a staying trip. But you just go back to Concert Hall, uh, she just looks beautifully placed. Mm. As a betting prospect, Danielle Johnson does the riding here. And this may be her last race before she heads across the Tasman BP. Is there any news around Concert Hall's future or immediate future? That's what I've heard anyway. Yeah, that's that's what they're lining up uh, in terms of a sold across the Tasman. Um, I actually don't have the races in front of me, what they... Uh, mm looking to try and go for uh, at the moment for Concert Hall. But, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the whispers I'm hearing anyway around here are looking to head to Australia. And I think she's in the, the right sort of form to be doing exactly that. I, I think she's a horse that has proven herself here that she is worthy of going to Australia. You only got to look at her, her stakes runs before that Group 1 victory. I mean, she's a horse that, as I said, can be competitive at 1,600 metres. I mean, she's been Group 1 placed at 1,600 metres only a couple of starts ago. Uh, behind Rock on Wood. She's won races like the Cuddle and the Thompson. Uh, those type of races over the distance of 1,600 metres. So, and, and what the Tauranga Stakes as well is another race over 1,600 metres. So uh, look, this, is, this shouldn't be a problem of 1,800 metres. Mm. And looks like further isn't going to be an issue as well with what we've seen with how she won last time to the races and even how she's, what she won a, was it a Manawa 2 Cup? Over 2,300 metres I think it was also from mm. last preparation. So very adaptable. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, what else in the race? I mean, fiscal fantasy. I think almost should have won uh, the anniversary in, uh, at Trentham there, uh, and Platinum Invader has runs well spaced, but it was a good second uh, in the City of Auckland Cup, I believe it was last start. BP. Yeah, I, I like fiscal fantasy. I, I think this is a horse that um, Frank Ritchie, as you heard, maybe leading into that race last time out. Just forget what happened, and they couldn't really work it out with how she. She ran so below par uh, in the in the Group 1 Zabil Classic. It looked like her form was tracking nicely heading into that race. Her form was, you know, obviously that form was rectified with how she's only just missed when running second to our Hal Mary in the Trentham Stakes. And the other horse, the obvious include is Platinum Invader. Look, he's a horse who does go back in distance from 2,400 metres by just missing uh, when beaten by Savion Blanc in the City of Auckland Cup. Good to see him back in NZ, and I think he's showing that he can be a, a real massive competitor for our Cups races coming up with how he's run at Ellerslie last time out uh, at Platinum Invader. Away from them, look, Vernon Mee is a, is a tough horse to follow, but he is a runner that will be looking to press forward. 
Uh, he, he's got a middle barrier draw. You'd imagine that they'll be looking to try and set things up in front. He ran ninth in the Zabil Classic when last presented. And you've also got Camino Rocoso in the race, which is, uh, as we all know, is a runner that's going to probably set up uh, all, all things tempo with Camino Rocoso, who just overdid it last time to the races when running, uh, what was it, sixth and behind Al Mary. You like anything down the page, Paul, here in the Taranaki Cup? It's very hard to look past Concert Hall, mm. but um, I don't mind the look of fiscal fantasy either. I thought that yeah. run in the Trentham Stakes was huge. Um, came home with a wet sail. Um, what beat it? The Alan Sherrick runner, Steve? The, no, Hail Mary. Yeah, Hail Mary. The concern yeah. is the way the map, she might be in behind Concert Hall. Does she have to turn her foot to finish over the top of Concert Hall in the map? because she has drawn the outside gate and barrier 13, physical oh. fantasy. And I think I've said the last two or three times she's raced, this is her swan song. Well, I believe this is definitely her swan song. <laughs> <laughs> is she in foal? She is in foal, yes. Right, do we know she who to? No. no, I don't. Oh, okay, I don't no. know. It's a bit of homework for BP. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he loves his homework assignments. Uh, Pops, uh, well, we know who's on top. Well, who are we sticking behind Concert Hall and the Taranaki Cup? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll stick with Fiscal Fantasy. I hope that she can, you know, tag in and, and maybe the horse that can be... Because I think there's going to be a lot of speed in this race. And, and if there is, she can tag the right runner. Well, there's no reason why she can't run into the money. Uh, and uh, Vernon Mee, Platinum Invader. Um, mm. Platinum Invader. I think, look, if it sets up for a good stay, well, then that's what he is, isn't he? He's, he, he is a very good stay, Platinum Invader. And, uh, you know, short of his best distance of 1,800 metres, but he'd be finishing strong. No love for Bluey's chance. Um, man barely standing, 30 to 1. Um, I'll pass. <laughs> man, you're suggesting it was an anomaly. Oh, I'm not uh, suggesting, I'm just saying. No. Dropping back from 3,200 yeah, yeah. to 1,800 in yeah. a week um, just might be a step too far. Yeah, okay. What do you, what do you got in behind concert hall, mate? Are you similar to Pops? Or? Uh, fiscal Fantasy, yeah. I think, should be there or thereabouts. Uh, and I didn't mind the stable mate Sheriff. Um, yeah. Could be in the mix at the end. Yeah, okay. Gee, she's going to be awfully hard to beat. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Concert Hall, 1.75. We want to have a look at one race at Winger 2, and that is the White Road, boys. Uh, I believe it's race number eight on the card. As I try and flick my computer over, Steve. Uh, there it is on your screens now. Uh, headed by Gallant Boy. Gallant Boy, the old war horse. $4.20 each of two, a raising command. Who's basically on the other flip side, a real progressive type. 550 Belfasino for peak of 650. So a little bit of a market move around the third favourite in Belfasino. Owen Patrick, 8 out to 850. Shares that price with Bronte Beach. Double figures around Kalani, 10 out to 11. Kilowatt, very firm at that $12 price. And a little bit of speaking also for Cheryl Morty at $15. And Midnight Runner, best of the rest, 15 out a couple of clicks to 17. So overall best back runner. It's purely on a market move here. Number 10, Belfasino, 650 into 550. Yeah, okay, Belfasino's the one they were into early, BP, but there are a few ways you can slice and dice the white road this year. Look, there is, isn't there? I mean, you've got last year's form that you can use with Kalani, uh, who was winning the race last year, and uh, second and third was also uh, Shirley Maud and Belfasino, who, who run in this year's edition. Uh, you've got uh, the winner from two years ago in Gallant Boy, who is looking, was it, for win 16 in his career, uh, the evergreen horse who was winning the Timidu Cup last time to the races. He, I think he presents as a, as a right real chance, Gallant Boy, because of his form leading up to uh, Saturday's race. I, I think you have to be really respecting his chances in the race. And, and then you've got Belfasino, who's going to be able to provide your speed and a horse who can be up on tempo, has a low gait, uh, was able to win two starts ago at Rickerton and, and second in the Timidu Stakes on the weekend just gone and behind all about magic when claimed late in the piece. So I think she's going to set things up to make the race very interesting. Away from those couple of runners, um, look, it's a tricky race to try and work out away from those three. Raising Command brings the up and running form, uh, does Raising Command. Um, and then and maybe Kilowatt, who did win the Gore Cup last time out to the races, that was over the 1800 metres, comes back to 1600 metres. But I'm, I'm sort of looking around the one and the 10 at the moment, boys. Yeah, man barely standing. The, the South Island racing, you've got a real penchant for the South Island. Uh, it's where you do your best work. You know? oh, I remember this race last year. <laughs> yeah? I back the second uh, place get a Shirley Maud. Okay. Um, I, I thought um, she was actually, actually going to win. I thought pulled out coming around the straight, and I thought, here we go. Um, what just price did, did you get on Didn't quite. Oh, it was okay. It was, <laughs> well into double figures? It was or? average. Yeah. Uh, but I don't mind the look of that race command. 
Um, back to back wins over 1400 metres, step up to 16 uh, up to the mile should be perfect. Uh, the Magic Man is on board mm. uh, and he's got a 17% strike rate at Wingatui since August of 2019. <laughs> hang on, hang on. A 17% strike rate since when? August. August. August 1st, 2019. So two, nearly two out of ten rides, he's, he's coming home with the chocolate. Yeah, with an average winning divvy of around $8.70. <laughs> I just, Around or exactly? He's, he's, <laughs> he, he is the second. He is the second best strike rate uh, for jockeys at Wingatui over that period. Okay. Only bettered yeah, by. Well, that was mm. my next question. Cosy Asano. Oh, go, go, Cosy. Uh, okay, Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson, Terry Kennedy, formidable combo, and the horses very going much so. well. Ford raise command, raise in command, I should say. Yeah, tricky race, Steve. Isn't it? It's is tricky. I don't yeah. have a strong opinion. Uh, no. Do the form down south. Let the other mm. gents look after sure. that. But um, the money is telling me around Bal Balfasino, and she looks okay placed in terms of weight for age. Yeah. You know, with a rating 88, and gets that 2 kg allowance being a mere. But in terms of ratings overall, the best placed horse is Gallant Boy with that rating of 100. Yeah. Uh, he's been there and done that obviously, and loves the track. So. Intriguing race, but yeah. just be careful when you're doing the form in terms of weight for age and where they're scaled in the ratings for the weights. Yeah, okay. Interesting. I mean, they backed mm. um, Belfacino last time, nearly got the chocolates down south, but it was just run over late. So, yeah, does, she's in good nick, isn't she, Belfacino? She is, and I, I think um, <clears throat> stepping back to the, uh, is it the 1600 metres, she went back and trip, 16 back to 14 at Rickerton, and back over a mile should suit her, and Sam Wynn gets on very, very well with Belfasino. Yeah, okay. Pops, you got Belfasino on top in this year's white robe? I'm going to go Gallant Boy just hey, in good. front of Belfasino. Yep. Uh, look, Belfasino almost tracks very similar to last year. The horse uh, was placed in the Timidu Stakes 12 months ago before going on and running a placing uh, in the white robe. So uh, is tracking very similar to last year, uh, is uh, this runner, runner number 10 in Belfasino. Uh, and if it can use the barrier draw and be forward and running like we've seen from her of late, well, I think that gives you every opportunity. Look, it's a, it's a terrific day of racing there uh, at Wingatui. This is their biggest day uh, of the year. It's their opportunity to, to, to race on a Saturday with good stakes. Uh, and uh, I remember covering this meeting down there Oh, it would have been four or five years ago, and it was a, it was a heck of a lot of fun down there. Uh, they've got the Dunedin Guineas also to look forward to, which is race number five, and I think this is a race where it's a good matchup between uh, The Gift and also Watchmaker. Watchmaker has competed in two Group 1s this season, the 2000 Guineas when running seventh, and also the Levin Classic. Uh, so that's a good matchup between those two horses with The Gift beaten last time out uh, in the Gore Guineas and the Dunedin Gold Cup, as well as the other feature down there. So, yeah, all, all the best to the club, and let's hope they really get uh, well supported and have a big day. Yeah, 100%. That um, Gold Cup looks quite interesting. D&G back in business, uh, back down south, and it was a tough run in the Wellian Cup, D&Gs. This is his sort of mm. race, isn't it? Well, well it, it is. Her, and her, and her horse... sort of race, I should say, sorry. Yeah, Yeah, that's right, and she won two starts ago down there, uh, out of uh, Wingatui before leading up to her ninth in, in the uh, Wellington Cup. But the other chance of that race is Beach Daz Bro, because he won so strongly last time out, and I know that there's been a bit of money for the horse also, and even as a thought, uh, as another runner that maybe can be considered at a, at a bit of a price uh, around that runner, runner number nine. Uh, but yeah, good, good competitive uh, staying race, that over the 2,400 metres. Yeah, looking forward to the day there. Man, Billy Standing, what are your selections in the white robe? You've got Raising Command, Kennedy Johnson going with your stats, are you? Yeah, Raising Command on top. Yep. Uh, I've got Gallant Boy in there as well, and I thought, uh, just as a little sneaky midnight runner. Ooh, uh, I love a sneaky. Finally, you've got to come up with a sneaky. Hang on. Yep, at around the 17, on. I think around the $17 mark. A huge effort last time, carrying 64.5 kilos on a heavy track at Riverton. Um, beat Gallant Boy uh, two starts back over 13.35. Um, so, fit as a fiddle. Could be in there somewhere. <laughs> don't, don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. I see a bit of money for Kilowatt. I also see some long shot money for an Alice Winslow runner and point score uh, who hasn't been too far away uh, at its last few starts. So interesting race, interesting day. Going to be a big day down there uh, at Wingatui. Uh, guys, we to get to best bets. Uh, now, look, I think we had an 0 for 3 last week, didn't we? Man, barely standing, would that be right? You were stiff. You should have run on the money, sweet Anna. You should have run on the money. <laughs> yeah, OK. I was on. Maybe I stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known. <laughs> What's your bet of the day this week, mate? Um, I'm heading uh, up to uh, Taranaki, uh, the Oaks Prelude, uh, Signora Nera, mm, okay. uh, the Alan, Sh Alan Sharrick runner. Uh, yeah, I just thought that third in the eulogy was uh, too good to ignore. 
and might need a little bit of luck, uh, but we should see her flying home. Okay, for about 5.5 currently for Signori Nera, uh, and a good each way bet in the race. Stephen, um, what, what did we have last week? I can't remember. Scratch. Oh, <laughs> I got it away. did race before. Sunday and it ran below betting expectation. I think it pulled up a little bit sore, so. That was Dun Eagle, wasn't it? Um, Dun Eagle. Yeah, okay. Well, oh, so yeah. we're only O for two. Oh, from two. two oh, yeah, true. Two my apologies. Yeah, my yeah. sincere apologies. Uh, Steve, what about this week, mate? You only go to race two at New Plymouth. Um, intriguing to see how the track plays. Mm -hmm. New Plymouth can be quite advantageous to on, on speed, speed, but I've gone back the last couple of years at this particular meeting. It's played quite true, so just keep an eye. Hopefully it does play true and all, all horses have their chance. But in race two, the rating 74 1800 metre race. I'm going with the local Alumbra lad, Lisa mm. Allpress, Alan Sharrett combo. Just like what it's done in all three runs, this preparation uh, was a game second on debut, a fourth over a distance short of its best 1400, probably was looking for a mile second up, uh, but ran home best 6 4 200 splits second up, and then did the job first up in a very, very dominant win at Otaki when stepping up to the 1600 metres. So 1800, no dramas. I'm normally against horses that go from maiden to 74. They skip a grade, but here I'm going to take an exception around Alumbra Lad, or Alumbra Lad, and mm -hmm. It's just got plenty of upside. I like identifying these horses that are going to go through the grades. The rest of the opposition have had a lot of exposed form. I know where the levels are at. Yep. We're number 11, a lumber lad, I think, can go through the grades. And not sure what price will open up. The undercard will uh, will be opening up in the okay. next 60 to an hour and a half. Yep. Um, but it'll be right in the mix, probably in the top two at least in betting. The price, Could be a big day for the Sharrock. I uh, was, was in my next comment. Right. two winners for Alan Sharrock, and that'll do, I'd say. Uh, <laughs> for us, yes. Yeah, it'll be my... <laughs> <laughs> he might don't, some... don't tell me BP's going to throw one uh, in there yeah. as well. <laughs> BP, come on, mate. Bit of the, bit of the weekend, Tom. Uh, look, I, I found it quite hard, actually, this weekend to be able to really nail one down. So I'm just going to go to the two-year-old form and, and trust the, the Richards-Bosson uh, combination with Quattro Quinta lining up in the uh, Woburn Farm Classic for the two-year-old. So uh, just Wellesley form, uh, a horse who can sit close to speed uh, and... Looks ultraly hard to beat, and maybe where the where the price sits at the moment, you know, around that 210, mm. 220 mark, uh, is still a healthy uh, investment. I thought around that price before maybe the price uh, starts to head into that sort of 190, 180 zone. So um, yeah, I'll mark him uh, as my best Quattro Quinta. Yeah, okay, 2.10 currently Quattro Quinta into Concert Hall. Easy as that, man. Barely standing. Here's your weekend sorted. Yeah, well. It sounds like a BP multi in the uh, making, doesn't yeah, it? It does. I will, it does. I will take note that BP's yeah. identified a race where there's no Alan Sharrock runner, so he's not tipping to beat Alan Sharrock. Uh, mm. uh, it's a race that doesn't have a runner there for, for the stable, so there you go. Very clever. clever. Yeah, very clever. Uh, thanks, Pops, <laughs> for your efforts as always, mate. What are your, what are your movements Saturday? Let us know. Uh, I'm looking after the uh, Wingatui form actually on, on Saturday, so um, mm. just uh, uh, trawling through some videos uh, for the next couple of days uh, to, to get ready for uh, what is going to be a big day for, for Wingatui. What I have noticed already is there's actually quite a few ex-Northerners that, that are heading there for their first assignment, and sometimes those ex-Northerners that have their very first start in the South Island uh, can, can be horses that are, that are worth having an investment on. Uh, look, I'll just mm. give you a couple now. Drop a name. Skaglioni is one of them, for instance, in the Dunedin Gold Cup, who sits at around $12. Desert Magic, who lines up in race number three. La Tagregada is another runner who lines up in that same race as well. They're all uh, ex-Northerners that are having their first start uh, in the South Island. That's just uh, scratching the surface with the couple that I've come up with uh, there in the, in the last probably 12 hours or so when looking at some videos. So, um, yeah, good fun to be had looking through uh, the Wingatui form coming up for Saturday. Yeah, it can be a big day. Thanks for your efforts, as always, mate. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Paul. That is your final word. Man barely standing. No, oh, just looking forward to another good weekend of racing. Uh, all the best to those up at Pukura Park and mm. down at Wingatui. Yeah, hundred uh, percent, Steve. What do we got next week? Just to keep us going it's, here. What's on it's next week? A big week? day at Waikato, isn't it? Uh, of course. Oh, BCD Sprint. Yeah, though. they're just all coming together. All the decent horses: Melody Bell, Headline Act, and the Herbie Dyke. BCD Sprint, you've got Avantage, Levante, Chuck and Corson, Mav. Disappointing we won't have a three-year-old in that sprint, but it doesn't take away a ripping race. And then you've got the three-year-old races, the Guineas and the yeah. Phillies race over 2,000 metres. So, And then mm. the undercard will be very, very strong. Some stakes up for grabs, so there'll be some nice progressive types in that undercard as well. Well, that's going to be exciting, and the Aussie stuff's heating up. We'll make sure we get all over that uh, as we head into uh, the autumn as well. But uh, we'll be back to preview that uh, Waikato Guineas meeting, uh, BCD Sprint Day. Uh, in seven days' time on the leg up. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you then.